everybody! Welcome to Game Does Play Games. Woo! We're playing Hyperlight Drifter, a game I backed. I'm super excited about. So let's do this. Yeah, man. Let's, uh, yeah, let's yeah. drift. I actually have no idea what's happening. No idea what's happening game. with this game. I just kind of conscripted him because I wanted to play it and do this. Oh, Enter my man. name. Oh man. We're gonna go with Wiener Town. Waste. Uh, Wasted farts. Basket. I like that too. Waste basket. Farts. Done. Waste basket. What's with you? I don't know, man. All right, it's been a weird so day. the sound of this game is done by Disasterpiece, and the game is uh, by Heart Machine. All right. I know I should have reversed that, but the reason I'm bringing up the, the sound, I'm sorry, the music, rather, uh, is Disasterpiece, uh, one of my favorite um, chiptune artists, and he is a um, baller when it comes to, to the ambient music. Nathan, for those of us who don't know, what is chiptune music? Chiptune music, um, I believe technically it started um, when somebody basically broke down a Game Boy and decoded it and was learned how to make noises with the Game Boy itself and then turned that into music. So uh, it was originally music done by uh, from game programming essentially super cool man pretty cool super right cool, right so yeah i like chiptune music it's definitely super interesting stuff i love it i listen to probably too much it's all right um so this game has a feeling that i could I like love that giant in the background oh it's crazy man so the, the the feeling of this game is only replicated by things like uh the labyrinth and um watership down with that that strange weird that that eeriness um it's it's a little it's it's a little dark but at the same time not overbearing on you but it weirds you out this is a little odd so now is this a uh, full release or is this still a beta this is full release awesome. now yep awesome awesome yep yep I really like that opening that intro sequence though. Right? Oh. They oh. look like robot uh friggin' um like, Titans. Like 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 robot organic Titan like th there's a little bit you can see like the muscle structure yeah. in there. And now they're falling apart, so the the look on his face is interesting because you don't get to see his expression very often. No. They get weird with this, by the way. This is just weird. I, uh, I'm trying to find meaning. And, uh, yeah. It's one of those things where when you see, like, a weird sphinx dog, you're like... You're like, all right. When, when, when you see Anubis, you're like, okay, this yeah. is... Uh, things have gotten strange. To death? The death all over the place? Maybe. Why but I've got to follow the dog. Diamond highlighting his head. It's like a, like an old-fashioned halo. Oh. Like the halo, like oh, the depiction like that used to be around, like... This, the whole head, not just like up here. Kind of. I don't know. Maybe there's there probably a lot more folklore behind this than right than we're of. giving you. We're talking about. And he really wants that thing. Yeah. Not sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of encryption in this when it like with the story that um, you you need to decipher while playing the game. Absolutely. Heck of an intro sequence though. Right. Right, it's uh, but it's one of those things where it's just like scene after scene of weird and nothing. It only uh asks more questions. It never answers anything. Now, in your personal playthrough, have you beaten this yet, or are you just still working your way? I've not beaten it. I'm um, decent bit in. Uh, I I I think I've finished. I I think I want to say I've completely finished one area. Okay, absolutely. And I'm, I'm starting on the second one now, so it's a decently lengthy yeah, game. A little, but a little navigational robot thing. Yeah, man, he's he's my little companion oh, guy. He's, he's so cool. Um, so it's uh, this game, by the way, in in honor to the we're playing with the pink controller because it's the hyper light drifter. It's all cool and yeah, 80s it's stuff. all pink and neon stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. So cool, right? Tutorial. Oh, I need to get past these. I guess I'll cut them with my sword, Zelda style. Boom. Press Y to take items. There's not a whole lot of text that happens in this game, so that does feel a little weird. A little weird. It does happen, um, and then it lets you know to heal. You can press left bumper. Uh, when it happens, I'll point it out because it's actually kind of cool. Uh, stuff and uh, bow. Why to interact? 
That's most of the tutorial at this point. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty simple. Everything one. else is pretty organic as far as how it teaches. That's good. You. I prefer an organic tutorial. Yeah. Right. So, um, right, we come here and we're like, what am I supposed to do? Do I, uh, okay, and I got hurt really bad. And I can um, heal um, by the way, I'm hurt, so now I can heal myself from dropping blood in my wake. And then I'll press the left button and, gah, Oh, super like, cool. We're getting adrenaline shots. Oh, and so you have to uh, drift to across drift. <laughs> across these gaps here. You have to hyper light drift. Uh-huh. Oh, uh hot. -huh. Hot. Hot. Uh, so our first enemy. Okay. Right? So, they give you plenty of, of health upgrades and stuff so you can experiment around with uh, things and... Is there something? So it doesn't seem like it's too not. punishing yet. No. It, yeah, it's it's not one of those that, like, you have to fail over and over again That's to good. figure it out. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a game like that, but, you know, those can get kind of intense after a while. Yeah, and it tends to uh, weed weed out players. Yes, yeah, exactly. To ping the HUD. Oh, this guy, right. You better try to ping that HUD. I pinged it. Oh, you done pinged it well. Oh, I never realized that. When he hits something, he's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and it makes like a, like a, it makes a noise letting you know he hits him. So it's pretty cool. Um, so you're staring at this like, oh, this is obviously something I should get up. So you can climb there, right? Oh, what? Right? That's, you, you dash against it. I like it. that neon art, man. It's really cool. I feel like you're a shadow ninja thing. Ooh. I took your item. It was a gun. A gun. Now you got a gun and a blade. You can blade gun all over the place. Samurai gun style. Samurai gun. <laughs> all right, so aim with this and shoot. So obviously mandatory teaching. Uh, so this is the thing. You can play oh. with the mouse and keyboard, but I will say that it doesn't work as well. Now, shooting is easier with the mouse and keyboard. I was about to say, yeah. But the problem is when you do your dash, you dash in the direction that your uh, aimer is pointing constantly. So um, mm. instead of like nuclear throne style where you would dash in the direction you <laughs> yeah, were pressing, you pressing. dash in the direction of the aimer. If they just switched that around, this game would be easier with the mouse and keyboard rather than a controller. Do you think it's better that they didn't or... Uh, not necessarily better, but ultimately, I don't mind either way. It's okay. So it's not really a make or break thing for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, and regardless, your gun's a little inaccurate. So even with mouse and keyboard, you're not going to be 100%. Right. So what um, what brought you to back this game? Was it was it solely the chiptune artist? It was the chiptune you? artist combined with the beautiful art combined mm -hmm. with what they, what they showed the gameplay was going to look like. And so I joined into the beta because I really wanted to see it. And, you know, that's usually what I look for. I just got hit. Usually what I look for when I play uh, or when I back something, I try to see if I can get into the beta. And um, because of that, I, uh, I, I, I joined it and I, I played it. It was only out for like a weekend or so. Yeah, because I know at one point there was talks of trying to do it for GDPG way back when. I, I attempted, and yeah. I failed. And, Ooh, is that like a mecha golem? Yeah, basically. I mean, is this like someone from the I world feel past? Like, I feel like I've fought something like this in a beta, but I haven't seen it since in this game. Like a living one. I have a feeling that looks like it'd be a difficult enemy, so maybe that's why. Maybe you're not at that point yet where it's like, okay, you can handle a fucking mecha golem. Yeah. They uh they do a lot of um do show a lot of things that look like they may have been from times past. Yeah, this game definitely feels like one of those kind of apocalyptic like post apocalyptic kind of games where it's like there was a better time. That time is not now. Yeah. <laughs> God. So okay, what what's the little navigation robot do for you other than point out things? Basically just that. I mean he's gonna like he goes over to things and he's like, hey, Hey, right hey, here. Hey, listen. Right here. Hey, listen. Yeah, but he's not annoying about it because he just, like, if you listen. Or, I guess he didn't do it this time. Yeah, he goes, like, like ching, whoop, Yeah. Like, every time. It, it's and that's bed. it. There, um, other than that script that tells you how to, the, at the beginning that you saw, yeah. showing you the tutorial, there is no script in this game. That's really so interesting. So, all of the narrative is done uh, through either picture or by experience. That's uh, Which cool. is really cool. Um, it makes things very cryptic, I will say, but, uh, I mean, that's the point, so. Did you ever, uh, watch Galaxy 999? 
that no it's one. a it was like an animated movie mm, i might have but not that i remember it uh this game just for some reason it reminds me a it, yeah. lot of it it just it's that being that world where things are strange and weird but you kind of just have to go with it uh, i feel you and explore it anyway um even though the f- first thing you want to do is just to be home and wrapped up and warm right but when you play this game you'll have that feeling where you're like i guess i'm just gonna keep going yeah i mean what else is there to do this this is it um so yeah uh, i guess we can uh, pick this up in the next episode yeah probably a good um, point there's yeah, we, something we, coming up so we yeah. can see that next time those trees look pretty fucking cool that is really cool yeah, there's a lot of like secrets and stuff right. the game, so. um so question of the day um, let's talk about Kickstarter for a minute. Maybe we can ask people what makes a good Kickstarter game. Why do you, what, what makes you want to back a Kickstarter game? Yeah, um, I mean, you were asking me before what, what got me into this, so I guess if you were, if you were going to, um, if you are going to back something, you know, actually, let's, let's evolve the question, because I have yeah. actually asked that before. Oh, okay. Uh, in, in this case, though, because we have backed this, and it's come to, it's, it's actually come into existence, and yeah. the game is real and live now um having backed it do you feel like it was worth worth your t- money early on or having not backed it do you regret having not got those little extra things like a, there's a gold gun and a gold oh, super cool. yeah uh you know or would, would this be one of those games and why uh, so. awesome awesome sounds good all right guys well then i guess we'll see you in the next episode adios do that comment and liking thing mm.